Rob said to me, what's the video going to be about today? It's going to be about the necklace I'm wearing. How about that? Um, actually, it's going to be a takeoff on a little story. I don't know if I told you already. It's been in my blog. <coughs> Excuse me. But um, my husband and I were traveling here, oh, six weeks or a um, couple months ago, back when I went to see my friend Kate and Marietta. And along the way, we stopped at an antique mall, and in that antique mall, I found, Rob, if you want to get up on it, this brooch. And I immediately zeroed in on this brooch because I made it. They had it labeled as an antique brooch. Um, it's not antique. It's made from parts that um, I can still get. But this background Art Nouveau part that we're going to center on a little bit in the video, um, I've actually seen it in antique sash brooches back when I was very active in the antiques trade. I, I've seen this used. So this die is old, old. It kind of has a arts and crafts period uh, feel seeging into uh, Nouveau or maybe back, I don't know, I think they ran concurrent. I'd have to look that up. You can Google it if you want. Um, but anyway, I saw this and I immediately zeroed in on it and I said, hey, I made that and I, it is signed. It's signed BSU 2001. So I paid for it and bought it and brought it home and it's kind of been an inspiration piece and a lot of people have said, you know, I'd like to make that but I don't know if I'd like to do it as a brooch or exactly that way. So we're going to explore a treatment in uh, raw brass. This was raw brass, brass when it started out. Let me just take it off and put it down here. Um, this was raw brass when it started out. Rob, can you get in on that? And I applied the flower that's on this only going vertically, drilled it out and beaded it, used our green brass. But all this patina on here, I did. So I'm going to teach you how. I used a torch to start it, to get a little tooth on it. And then I used uh, some Gilder's paste and some decor and uh, just a bunch of stuff. And I'm going to give you a little bit of an idea of how you can play with it, change it up and get the look you want. And then if you want those parts, we do have them at Bisu Boutiques. We have them in raw brass, and we also have them in the rusty black, which I'm also going to show you a little bit more about distressing today. So come on over. I'm going to heat up the torch and show you how I put patina on the brass first. So you can see I have the raw brass on my soldering block, <coughs> which is well loved. Um, you can see I've drilled this out first, too, and tube riveted it. I'm not going to show you how to do that. You can go back through the YouTubes if you want to see a video. that We have a couple of them. Or just punch into YouTube. I'm sure someone else can show you too. But this is the way I do it. I drilled it out and I like to finish my holes with a tube rivet when I have time. But anyway, basically I just have my mini torch. And I'm not, you know, you guys probably know a whole lot more about torches than me. But this is what I do. And, you know, if you have a different way, then fine, good for you, do it. But this is how I do it. I just light her up and get it on there. This is going to take a little bit, <laughs> so I don't know if I'll walk us all the way through or do all the piece. But I'm, I'm heating the, the piece up really good. And as you can see, it takes a little while to get it really started. So, you know, some of you who are bench workers probably have like a way, way better in, uh, technique for this than me. But it's basically, don't worry about the smoke coming off of it. It may just be a little grease that's still on the brass. In this case, you know, I always tell you, get your brass, your raw brass, good and clean. Um, in this case, uh, it's not as important. Sometimes a little bit of that machine oil left on I mean just a tiny residue, I mean dripping, uh, can actually help you get a little bit of tooth with the torch, get a little bit more patina. Can you see how it's kind of iridizing? I don't know, Rob, can you get in a little bit closer? See how it's iridizing? So we'll want to get this till it's like almost glowing red. It's starting to there. Now I want you to know, if you um, patina brass like this, the finish is very transient. That means you must seal it for it to stay. So you can torch the heck out of it. If you don't seal it, you know, you could just clean this right off or it could wear off. So uh, Renaissance wax is a good way to go. Um, however, since I'm going to end up painting on this, 
I wouldn't do it, but if you just wanted to go over this and not paint it, then I would do Renaissance wax. Anyway, that's as far as I'm going to go for lack of time. But basically, okay, now what do we do? Well, we never touch it, that's for sure. You're not going to want to touch this. Pick it up with the copper tongs. And see, I've got a bowl of water over here. Stick her in there. And that's it. Yeah, it's cool. So you just wipe it off. If you don't like that, if that's not enough patina for you, then uh, you can torch it some more. But basically, that's how I get a little tooth on it. Okay, so let's shut that off there, Rob, and you can follow me over to the other surface, and we will go from here. Okay, so we're to the place now where I've gone ahead and I've done the flower, too. And uh, what we would do is we would um, glue these together. Then and if you then let the glue set up and then if you like it like this and you don't want to do anything else to it which would be absolutely fine, then to seal it you could Renaissance wax it or you could matte spray lacquer it. But you're going to have to do it and you have to do both sides to keep your patina or else it would just wear off and not stay. Okay, but we're going to colorize this a little bit and here's how we're going to do it. I have some Gilder's paste mixed into some clear nail enamel. We did this in a video a month or so back. Okay, I have Pinotage mixed into clear nail enamel. You can pick any color you like and fool around with it and see what you get. You get what you get. And as you can see, I don't really care if I get it on my work surface. If you do, then you better put something under it. Every so many years, we just put a new top on this. I don't know. It's probably not the best way to go, but it's how I do it. So you can see, the pinotage was starting to set up a little bit in the uh, nail enamel. You have to be kind of quick, and I mixed it off camera, trying to save time so I could show you everything. But you can see, I just put a little on there to kind of bring a little bit more of that ruddy patina into it. And then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... This is Viva Decor uh, Golden Green. Now, you know, you can use any kind of metallic green acrylic paint. We, we carry this to the site. I think we're out of it right now. We have all the other Vivas, but I think this one, the supplier, didn't send. So we're still waiting for it. But I'm just putting a little bit in. You know, this would really go good with our green brass, and it does. As you can see over here, I've mixed it with a lot of our green brass. Um... Also, where's that flower? Okay, here's the flower. So I'll put a little bit onto this. And as you can see, my brush went kind of stiff, so that's not cool. But we're trying to get this in today. So I can show you, because I'm not going to be able to do too many videos for a few weeks. Um, I'm going to have a little hospital stay. Don't worry about me. I'm going to be fine. But, uh, in fact, I'm going to be better. Better than ever. But I'm not going to be able to do a lot of videos for a few weeks until I heal. So I really wanted to get this in for you today. Okay, so now I've got this put together. So now what do I do? If I had more time, I'd spend more time with that. But I'm going to glue this to this. Now, you know, the original brooch here has got a bunch of little beads and bobblies and stuff like that. And I didn't put that on my pendant here. Um, but, you know, you could. I mean, it's all up to you. It's, it's your deal, right? Sure. It's your deal. Now, I'm a little messy with the glue, so what am I going to do about that? Well, I'll show you in a second. It's really hard to get this all on camera for you. I'm going to just walk over here and get a toothpick, which isn't here right now. So I'll use this for now. I want to clean this glue out of here. You know what? The thing about E6000 is it's so viscose that once it sets up, you really can still clean it up. You can use a little glue, goo gone um, to soften it, or you can just pull it off, pick it off. So that's not a good glue job, but I'm just doing it for this for sake of time just to show you what that will look like on there. And then when this is set up, um, since I've painted over it, I would not do Renaissance wax. I would do some diamond glaze, which is what I did over this, or matte spray lacquer. But you can see how you can take this. You know, there's a lot of ways we could go to make this a whole lot prettier and to really pop even more than it does. 
but like I say, lack of time. So it just gives you an idea of where you could go with this pretty finding, which we do carry at Bisu Boutiques. Now something else I'd like to show you is this is actually a rusty black piece that has the rusty black patina like this on the back of it. And I went over, I first I buffed it out with the reliefing block from the nail salon, and then I put the pinotage over, wiped it off, and did the golden green, and that just is stunning, beautiful, and still got the rusty black back. But then to show you a little bit more of what we can do, yeah, I'm going to have to work on this a bunch more yet, but you can see the point, and you can get ideas. Okay, to show you just a little bit more what you can do. Um, here's a, here it is in rusty black all drilled out. Now this I haven't buffed out, but you've seen me do this before, I'm sure, but I'm going to do it again. Just take this, look and see how I'm raising that, and now you can see all that great detail. Oops. And it's totally awesome. Look at that. I like that just how that is. Oh man, is that awesome. But then if I wanted to apply that flower, and I'm not going to do it on camera now because I like to take my time. When I go fast, I screw up and it just looks like I don't know how to do anything. It doesn't help you either. And I'm here to help you, so I don't want to do stuff that doesn't help you. So you can see how I'm getting right in there. Okay. Now which way would you put it? Like that? Or like, I kind of like it this way. I like the flow of it this way. I always think of flow when you're making a piece. But this will be absolutely beautiful. Another thing that I thought I would buff out on camera for you is this Mothra piece. And as you can see, I have drilled him. Now, I haven't tube riveted him to finish the holes. You don't have to finish the holes. I just kind of like to. I drilled him out. And if you looked at our blog and our newsletter um, and also our our Flickr group, you could see that Grace Acosta last week did a fabulous bohemian piece using Mothra and applying Patina Gilder's paste over top of it. So I drilled him out the same way she did in her piece. Now let's see what happens in Rusty Black when I remove some of the top to reveal the copper underlayment. Oh my goodness. I've never done one of these guys. I have carried Mothra. We call them that. This again is a really good piece of an arts and crafts period design. Um, he is hes amazing. and We have sold so many of him. It's from a very, very old historic dye made in the United States. Probably originally came from Europe. But I don't know. I'm not up on my art history as much as I should be. Maybe while I'm convalescing, I'll read a little more about it and share it with you when I find out. But there he is, buffed up. And then you could hang the chains and stuff like Grace. Go to the Flickr group, Bisu Boutique's creative group, and look for Grace's big piece with the patina over top of this. And you are going to love seeing that. One more thing I wanted to show you. These just came in. We got them exclusively for Etsy. Now, this is in the Choxy finish, the Chocolate Ox. And this is our um, Spinner Heart. Love meters, I call them. See how that spins? It's English on one side, and it's French on the other. It comes from a really cool old die. And I stopped getting these in any finish except Brass Ox for the longest time because they just didn't plate so good. But then I decided to go ahead and get it in the chalk scene, see what it looks, and it plated very nicely, but there isn't a lot of definition, so we're going to go for it. We're going to make our own definition. Look at that. I think we're doing chalk scene and rusty black on these from now on. Because see what happened was the arrow got in the way of the plating. But it didn't. When the brass was plated, it... it, it in this finish, it was pretty cool. And you know, any highs and lows you can deal with in this finish. So, I'm just going to go for it. Now, can you see where this could go if you added a little color? Now, I can't use my pinotage now because it's setting up. Because you know, the nail polish sets up pretty quick. But, I mean, just like that. It's pretty good. You could add a little Renaissance wax and kind of oil it down. That would be pretty cool. A little bit of alcohol ink, maybe. Make it cool. 
a little bit of black and bring the letters out even more. But I think it's mighty fine, just like that. And all you did was relief it. And yeah, I would take some Renaissance wax to that and kind of oil it down a little bit. But anyway, that gives you some really cool ideas of what you can do to raise patina in the chocolate box. Like, for example, these. I raised the patina, and I added actually a little bit of Perfect Pearls to these, which um, you use the Perfect Medium, which comes in your Perfect Pearls kit. We, we do have the range of Perfect Pearls. And you ink them. And then you take and you apply your dusty stuff. You know what? Let me do one for you. This is a piece of like 26 gauge brass that we carry at the site. We have this piece from time to time. It's drilled out. And I put it through the rain, the who makes Sizzix Big Shot or Big Kick in one of the folders that Vintage has out, which are very cool folders. Um, our brass works in those folders just fine, so long as you don't get heavy. You can't put the real heavy pieces in it. But the lighter pieces, 26 gauge, 24 gauge, usually we put on the site what works in a quick cuddle bug. If you have a question, you can always ask me. But anyway, you can see how that lifted up so nice. Well now, if you take, and you take the perfect medium, and you ink it just a little bit, which this one's kind of dried out, but I'm going to be able to give you the idea. This stuff has a resin binder in it. I'm going to have to use, here we go, I'll use this one. This has a resin binder in it, so you don't have to do anything, but I don't know what's up with that. You can count on something to always go wrong when you're trying to hurry. But you can put this over, so look at how, look at how beautiful that becomes. You can just add that, just a little bit here and there. And then you can heat set it with a dryer, you know, with your embossing gun. You can do that. You really should. I don't have that here on camera. We're going to run out of time. Maybe I'll do another video right after this and we'll concentrate on it a little bit more. How would that be? I think maybe we should. Okay, but that gives you an idea. What if we did it on here? Hmm. Want to go for it real quick before we run out of time? Let's find out. What if we did it on here? I'm feeling adventurous. Ooh. Oh, man, yeah, just that little hint of the copper on there. Of course, now you'd want to do both sides because it's a, a two-sided piece. But so you see how you can start with one finish and totally make it your own? It's just so awesome and so fun and so mixed media. Have fun with your mixed media stuff. Ranger Perfect Pearls, Bisu Boutique's Brass and the Rusty Brass and the Chocolate Ox Finish. Your cuddle bug, your big shot, your bossing folders, your deco etch folders, whatever it is that you like to work with. Have fun and show us what you're doing at Bisu Boutique's Creative Group.